Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum today. We are looking forward to a great time together. Ruth, we have coming up Lee Smith with us in a few moments uh, from Primary Residential Mortgage and going to give us some great information. So I just encourage you to stay with us. It's going to be good. A lot in the news. How was your weekend before we go any further? The weekend was very full and you're going to enjoy. I was just uh, thinking as you were introducing Lee, what a great guy he is. You're going to learn a lot from him, but just to, to meet him and know him and talk to him. He's a very kind, very smart man, so you're going to want to listen to that. I've had a, I had a really busy weekend, uh -huh. not overwhelmingly, but stayed busy throughout sure. the weekend. We had a nice one. Well, we uh, have a lot to talk about today in the news, and uh, a lot of it does center on what is beginning to happen nationally mm -hmm. uh, with really conceivably could be another wave of the covid uh, outbreak. I mean, and, and I think we just have to be real. Th there is rising numbers. Mm -hmm. There are rising numbers yes. nationally. Uh, there are rising numbers in, I believe, every state. And sadly, there are rising deaths connected mm -hmm. to this. Now, here is the challenge. One of the things that uh, President Biden over the weekend was talking about in the administration is that this is a pandemic among the unvaccinated. Yes. But, but the realities of what is in the news does not match that. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is the fact that several of the folks from the state of Texas who were a part of the delegation in Texas who went ahead and, and flew out of state and they went to Washington, D.C. And you've probably mm -hmm. watched that. I don't really want to, I'm not really focused on why they left, but they left. Uh, they, they left, though, to, to slow a bill down that right. the Republicans were pushing. Nonetheless, five of them have come down with COVID. I know from reading the, the news articles over the weekend that the first three that came down, I don't know about the last two, but the first three were vaccinated. Hmm. So, and see, that's the, that's the problem. There it is. And um, what's been said doesn't match what's happening. Right, it doesn't match the reality. Right. And, and that's a tragedy because what we have now is a crisis of confidence in our healthcare officials yes. and, and really our political leaders that they're not telling everybody the, the truth. truth. And, and the problem has continued to emerge. You know, let's just talk about some of those reasons. Okay. It wasn't very long ago that on social media, if you put a post up that talked about the fact that the virus, the, for the Wuhan virus had come out of a lab, that that was flagged as false information. Right. Mm -hmm. I, right. Now, and we were being told by, by health officials, oh, that's not true. By, mm -hmm. by political leadership, that's not true. They've changed their, their, their tune. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying, no, it, it, it's very probable that it did, very possible that it, it did come, come out, out of, of the, the Wuhan lab. Mm -hmm. Well, when you have people changing positions on big items like that, you have promoted a crisis of confidence in those people. People don't believe them. I mean, that's the reality of where we are. The vaccination rates are slowing down. Right significantly, they're almost hitting a glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doesn't matter where you live. I mean, this is a national problem. It's in New Mexico. It's, a, it's an issue because people simply don't believe what they're being told anymore. Well, one of the articles that I read where people were afraid that maybe they were microchipping people. And, but I think the most thing, the most, the highest reason or one of the most significant reasons is because, like you said, they don't trust what you're saying because it changes all of the time. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a science, right, science well, wouldn't change. Told. Follow the science. But it is changing, and so that's, that's where it is. Well, what was the things that we were taught as we went to school? Mm -hmm. That science is something that you have these theories, right. and that they can, if they can prove those theories, then we know that those can be facts. The problem that we have is that we're being told certain things are trustworthy, reliable, factual, and then it changes and it's found to not be trustworthy, reliable information. Okay, so here's some information okay. that came out in a YouGov poll. This was dealing with people who were rejecting uh, the vaccination, saying that they did not want to get it. Listen to, to some of the information that's here. Uh, those who reject it fear possible side effects from the vaccine more than they fear the vaccine of the, the disease itself, 90%. Mm -hmm. So they say, look, I'd rather, 90% of the people are saying, I'd rather catch the disease than I would, I'd 
because that's I'm more fearful of the side effects than I am of the disease. And I've spoken to several people um, that have told me they've said, you know, I'd rather catch it and pass from that than get the vaccine. I, yeah. And that's exactly where we are right now. Well, when you have people saying that, verbalizing that, the likelihood of them taking a vaccine is, is very low. Yes. Less than one in 10 of the vaccine rejectors, okay, mm -hmm. trust medical advice from Dr. Fauci. Okay, so l apparently less than one tenth wow. of them say, I, I trust what they're saying. Okay, that's what I'm talking about, that crisis mm -hmm. in confidence. Uh, only about one in five, roughly 20%, uh -huh. trust the CDC. They, they don't, right. don't believe what they're saying either. And about 20%, again, one in five, believe that the government is using vaccines to microchip the population. Now, you, you mm -hmm. might say one or two of those, ah, that's crazy. Okay. But you've got four major drivers there. And mm -hmm. if anybody believes one of those four major drivers then they're going to say, I don't think I want to take the vaccine. And, and I think another thing that's just strange to people, again, this, I'm talking about the crisis of confidence. Mm -hmm. When you see billboards driving down the freeway saying to you, hey, we will pay you money right. to be in a lottery to win if you, if you take the vaccine. And I think back over my 50 years of living, and I can never remember a time in my life when we've been given opportunities of winning a lottery mm -hmm. for taking any type of vaccine. Mm -hmm. Again, that says to you, why? why? You question Too many. it. Mm -hmm. Too many people. I think it's Los Angeles County, I believe, that is reinstating the mask mandate, and that's mm -hmm. across the board for those who are unvaccinated and vaccinated, which is one of the reasons many people did receive the vaccine, because it was uh, to return to life as normal you would take the vaccine and you can take your mask off. Well, now we're re-implementing, they are in Los Angeles County, regardless of whether you've been vaccinated or not. Well, we were talking- Wear the mask. Up to a medical professional yesterday. Over the weekend, and they, right. Over the weekend, and they were talking to us about the fact that, you know, the reality is that this variant right. is not vaccine proof. Now, it, it, it does cover a lot of people, probably a lot of people will be covered by it but there are some, some holes there. Well, here's one that is just completely away from what we were talking about, but as bizarre as it comes. A guy in Florida robbed a bath and body works in the mall. And his getaway went in there and was loading up with candles and I don't know, what else? But, candles. Okay, candles, said. was that the big big thing he yes. wanted? Uh, and, and, and this so was then in, he sprayed bear spray. You've had, and that's an irritant to your eyes and to your respiratory. He sprayed, I think, the manager and some patrons in the mall, and he escaped by cab. So got away with the candles by cab, and so he's facing multiple charges for aggravated assault and battery if they, when they catch him, if and when right. they catch so, him and this over was in a, candles in Bath and Body. Who would spray bear spray on people? Number one. And, and number two, I mean, it's, it's hard to understand why anybody would... <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not, okay, I don't even know what to say mm -hmm. about it, but this was in uh, the Doral suburb yeah. west of Miami. Um, that just seems bizarre. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say Kind of funny, kind of not, yes. Hey, on some happy news, aren't you thankful that we've been getting so much rain throughout New Mexico? The rain has been very welcomed because it's been so dry and so hot. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, over the weekend, it was 95 degrees, it rained, and it dropped like... 25 degrees after it dropped, after it rained, so it was very nice. Um, taking a walk after that was very nice and cool. Isn't it amazing, uh, you know, what a little rain will do? It just kind of refreshes everything. Mm -hmm, Things start down. greening up. Oh, sure, you might have a few weeds to pull. Hey, <laughs> that is part of the, of the yes. price, but it's nice to see us getting that. I even saw that they said that, that down at Elephant Butte, which is a reservoir as well, that the water level had risen ever so slightly, but hey, better going up than going down, right? So yeah. that, you know, that's good. Um, we've been talking a lot about a lot of things going on in our world concerning the vaccination and concerning our health. And I just wanna encourage you to continue to seek the Lord and ask yeah. God for wisdom in everything. We can share our opinion and you can watch the news and find out what's going on there, whether you trust it or not. 
But one thing you can trust is that the following and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. And you can ask the Lord for wisdom, and He says He will give it to you, and He does not hold back if you ask Him. So in these days, during this time, is a great opportunity for you to stretch your faith, ask God for wisdom, then listen to what He says, and, and then step out by faith. God bless you guys. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. Certainly appreciate each and every one of you who are supporters of Alpha Omega Broadcasting. I have good news. We've been working diligently on the microwave, backup microwave, talked to the engineer over the last Weekend, few days. Yeah. It has arrived. Mm -hmm. So just now it needs to be installed. Yes. That, that's one of the things off the checklist. They also are very hopeful that they may have a have some great leads on a backup transmitter for the awesome. station. So we are thankful for that as well. Your support helping us pay for the transmitter is going to be important. Yeah. You know, there's always maintenance issues. I, again, talking to them over the course of the last few days, and we have multiple air conditioners on top of Sandia Crest. Air, Sandia Crest is not, you know, uh, known for being hot, but you have a building where they're, you know, you've got all this equipment inside producing right. heat. Summertime, it can still get up 80 degrees mm -hmm. or so. Um, we have multiple air conditioners up there. Well, one of them broke. I mean, it's just, you know, the process, it's just like your house. Mm -hmm. There's always things happening, things breaking. Your support of the President's Club matters, yes. really matters. Those 50 75 and $100 donations. We are so thankful for you. We are so thankful that you are investing in Alpha Omega Broadcasting, caught the vision, and that you have partnered with us. Many of you are new, and I want to say thank you so much for giving and those of you who have continued to give over time and even increased or added an extra donation, want to say thank you so much for that. Visit us online at kazq32.org. You can give safely there. You can also call into the station at 505-884-8355, extension 101, to give safely and also to be added to our mailing list. And if you do have your a donation ready, just mail it to us at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. I want to say God bless you and thank you for investing in Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. Pleased to have with us today Lee Smith. Lee is with Primary Residential Mortgage right here in the Albuquerque area. Lee, we welcome you today. Thank you. We're excited to, to learn a little bit about what's going on in, in, with uh, mortgages and houses and all of those kind of things. But tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure, sure. So uh, I've been in the mortgage industry for 11 years now. Uh, started uh, over at Bank of Albuquerque about 11 years ago. Um, last uh, December or December of 2019. A uh, partner of mine, uh, Mon Fon, and I started a, a new mortgage company here locally, uh, PRMI, Primary Residential Mortgage. Uh, so we've been doing that for the last year and a half. It's been great. Um, the mortgage industry uh, has been has been fun. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of changes, uh, a lot happening in the mortgage industry now, as, as you've probably heard the news. So you started with a bank, and you decided mm -hmm. to, to move from a bank to, to doing it a different way. What was the what prompted you? Kind of pushed you along well, that area. Well, uh, you know, just just the vision that we had of, of doing things maybe a little bit different. Uh, not not that they were doing anything wrong necessarily, sure. but you know, we, we we saw that there was a lot of changes in in the industry, and we just wanted to be able to keep up with uh, you know technology mainly. Uh, products, um, service level, and just doing things really our way. We had a, we had a vision, and yeah. uh, and we we really wanted to to do things the way we wanted to and follow that vision. So tell us a, a few, maybe just some high points. How are things changing a little bit? I mean, oh, yeah. you know, we're so, we're, t we're talking about that. What, what are the places that it's so, happening? So so many changes uh, nationwide, uh, you know, and, and it's in the news all the time with the, the housing industry, right? Okay. Uh, right now, definitely some shortages that we're seeing nationwide, oh, wow. especially in Albuquerque. We, a lot of shortages. There's a lot of uh, a lot of demand, very low supply, and as you know, Albuquerque's growing. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty quickly, you know, a lot of new businesses coming in, coming in, and uh, just not enough houses. Well, last year with COVID, uh, the other part of it is rates dropped to historic lows. You know, we were down mm -hmm. below three percent, never been that low before. Um, last year, I think we had 17 um, record-breaking 
uh, times when we when when rates uh, broke broke the broke the previous record. So they just continue to go down. Wow. So that didn't help the demand, right? Now everyone wanted to purchase, right? right? And and the other part of it is a lot of people were were stuck at home finding out that when they wanted a new house, there was just not enough space. And it's just a combination, you know, when just you're a there all day, storm. hey, yeah. this could be a bigger place, right? Right, right. You're, 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 you're kind of stuck in this house with your whole family. All of a sudden, you're like, we need more space, right? So it's just a perfect storm, really. And uh, uh, with the dropping rates, we had a refinance boom. Um, people trying to purchase, so there was a purchase boom. And uh, so last year, our first year in business, uh, it was it's it a was good year exciting. to start a new was, business, right? It was, you know, a lot of challenges. You know, it was just so much demand. It was, it was difficult to keep up with. So we hired staff pretty quickly, uh, changed buildings to a bigger building pretty fast. Were those know? some of your biggest challenges was just logistics? Or? I would say logistics, you know, with, with uh, trying to balance, you know, keeping people working from home, keeping people separated, following COVID guidelines, which, which we did uh, very closely, and then bringing people back to the office slowly, half the staff, uh, leaving, leaving our loan officers at home. Um, they, in fact, they just recently started coming back to the office here um, in June. We, okay. we opened it back up for them to come back. We've had our operations working from the office. Um, moving to the new office was another challenge that happened in September oh, of 2020. Moving is so, a horrible thing, oh yeah, isn't so it? So much fun, you know. <laughs> so we, we, we had a lot of uh, growth last year, uh, of course, with the, with the business, but a lot of growing pains. And I feel like we got through it. You know, we came out on the other end learning a lot more, being better at what we do. And, uh, you know, it's been good, you know, so this year has been a really good year. So let's jump ahead to mm -hmm. 2021. And, uh, you know, last year was a great year for rates and things were low mm -hmm. and you hear different things. And of course, I know rates change daily, right? They're, Absolutely not, they're never the same. Yeah. I mean, throughout the day they change. Okay. Yeah. So what, what does it kind of look like looking at 2021? So rates right now, they in, in Rates right now are still low. We're still in the very low threes, and and uh, today, in fact, they dropped even a little bit more. You know, wow. so we, we might we might hit three percent. We're right there, but um, rates right now should be higher than they are. You know, inflation, mm -hmm. as you've probably seen, is is all time high. It's right, taken off. Taken off, and inflation typically will pull rates up. That hasn't happened yet. And so, do you so think when it happens, it's going to happen in a hurry? You think it's going to? I think be it's like going to happen in a pull. It does. It's going to pull. And what the reason that it hasn't moved up yet is because of the, the Fed and the stimulus and that. There's been a, there's been a lot of that happening. The Fed's kept rates low, um, by by injecting money into the economy through mortgage-backed securities. That's kept rates where they're at. Okay. So looking forward, I'm mm -hmm. hearing that people and you know nobody knows for sure. So. Right. Well, just Crystal talking ball. about what's out there, but they're, they're telling us that 2023 starting to think that the interest rates will start to rise, or do you think it's going to happen sooner? It could happen sooner. What's mm. going to, what's going to prompt it is uh, tapering. Uh, the Fed's getting a lot of pressure from Congress to start pulling back and not injecting so much money in because of the inflation. Uh, the Fed, the, the Fed has also recognized that there is an inflation concern. Sure. And so they may start tapering. As soon as that happens, we're going to start to see rates move up. Okay, so I mean, just from a from a perspective of a person watching today, if mm -hmm. you are a homeowner and you have, you know, a, the opportunity of refinancing, there might not be a better time than now. Right now is a great time to do it. Values are up, right? Mm -hmm. The values have gone up uh, twelve to fifteen percent in the Albuquerque area. They're going to continue to go up probably for the next few years. Well, let's so. talk about that. Why do you mm -hmm. think they'll keep going up? Well, supply and demand. Okay. There's a, a lot of pent-up demand, very low supply. They can't build them fast enough. We were talking about that earlier. You know, There's just nowhere for people to go, right? Uh, whether it's renting, finding a rental property, or, or what have you. So, there's, uh, so values are going to continue to go up. It's just basic so, uh, supply and demand. All right. So you know, as you're thinking about what to do next, it sounds like you almost have to be a, an aggressive hunter. Is that is that true? If you're looking for, if, oh you know, yeah, if you don't absolutely. Own a house you have if you to want be. to. You've got to really get out. You there. do. You have to be aggressive. You have to put in offers sometimes above list price, sometimes pay sellers closing costs. There's just a a lot to that uh, negotiation, and that there's where you need to find a really good realtor to to represent you. Someone who's aggressive is going to go after it. A lot of people are putting multiple offers in and. They're just not having any luck, you know. I would, I would think now, and you can maybe address this because you're in it every day. You know, is it a good time to buy? And, and here's why I ask: prices are up, mm -hmm. right? Will nobody knows for sure? But I mean, as you look and talk, do you think that that we're on a bubble, or do you think that we're just kind of at a situation where things are just on a trend? They're, they're on a trend. They're going to continue to go up. I think it's a great time to buy. Okay. A uh, couple reasons is the values are going to continue to go up. You know, at least for the next couple of years. You know, they're they're not going to be able to um, reach the, the 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 demand need All right. probably for the next few years. So values, as you know, are going to keep going up, and interest rates are still low now. So, yeah. 
Um, and it takes time to build a house. I mean, I don't know if yeah. you've ever watched them build a house. Some, some of you may have. Maybe you've bought a new house. If it's a, a custom home, it would be, could take nine to 12 months to It sure build. can now. It could, yeah. even in a, and, and I don't mean this in the wrong way, but a, a builder who's building a lot of houses, sometimes they refer to those as track builders, um, you know, those guys can't knock them out in a couple weeks. I mean, you're still dealing probably with a, maybe a six, eight month runtime. That's the truth. Yep. Even track builders are, you know, six to eight months out just because of the, uh, the supply lines and also the demand, you know, that, that there's so many people that are, that are trying to get into homes right now. Yeah. You know, builders are doing really good right now, but you know, it does, it is taking a little longer to build homes. And of course, here's another thing, supply chain. There's some supply chain issues That's dealing awesome. with building supplies. So, you know, we've got a lot of, there's lot a lot of factors, aren't there? There's a lot of stuff happening right now in the housing industry. There's just so many moving parts right now. Uh, a lot of hurdles, we're getting through them, you know, but uh, it's still a great time to buy. If they can get out there, buy, purchase, refinance, I mean, the, the rates are good and there's still a lot of opportunities. Okay, so Lee, if somebody's going to come to to you at there at Primary Residential Mortgage, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that they should expect? I mean, what are they going to need to have in line and be able to, to buy or to refinance? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, basically, you know, what what they'll be able to do is sit down with a, with one of our loan officers, um, you know, get, get an idea of is it worth refinancing uh, where's, or if they're purchasing, what is comfort level you know how much they're qualified for always a first step when you're purchasing is to get pre-qualified that's good um, as you move through the process uh, documents that you're going to need the basic documents are you know pay stubs w do, w2s taxes um, bank statements you know are, are the basic items that you'll need you know so being able to have all those together and providing that to your lo will will be able to get you the best uh, probably uh, uh, service that you're going to be able to get, estimates, that kind of thing. And watching your credit score is important too. Absolutely, isn't it? credit is huge. Credit is going to determine what your rate looks like, and, and even and if you can even get qualified. So, kind of guess, give us a range. I mean, you know, people, a lot of well, people hear a number. Is there a certain point that people try to be at on their credit score? I, ideally, if you can be above 700, it's great. But you know, there's so many different loan programs out okay. there. We can really go as low as 500 on a credit score. I mean, wow. Yeah, we don't we don't like to go that low, but there are pro products and programs available for that. Um, 620 is another key number to try to hit. You know, if you can get over 620, then that puts you into conventional loan products. Uh, still a little bit low for conventional, uh, but still doable. Okay, so yeah. making sure you have some of your financial documents together. You can mm -hmm. certainly talk to the, the mortgage uh, folks uh, who can help you with this, folks like Lee. Or, and also, you know, watching your credit score. Uh, you, you guys are local? We are local, yes. We are, we're located on Wyoming and uh, Barstow okay. uh, on Carmel at the La Cueva office park there. All right, and of course, we've got information for you on the screen. Always like to talk to local business folks because they can really help us out on a local basis. Lee, thanks for coming by today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. On the 700 Club, reaching out to those in need, going to the far corners of the earth, making our world a better place to live. The pure joy of giving to others, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, clothing the poor. How Americans just like you are making an incredible difference around the world. On the 700 Club, Today, as we close our time together, let's go to the book of John, John chapter number five. This is the account of Jesus healing a lame man at the pool of Bethesda. Okay. Um, Ruth, why don't you share a little bit about that? So let's start at verse six and seven. Okay. This is as Jesus begins to encounter this man. Sure. When Je Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he'd been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to get well? The invalid answered, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm coming, to get in it myself. Someone else always steps in ahead of me. All right, so this is kind of interesting to me because Jesus' question, and I think it's a question to all of us, is would you like to get well? Mm -hmm. Would you like your life to change? This guy doesn't seem to have any faith. What does he have? He has an excuse. Well, you know, no I mean, I me. can't. Right. Isn't that the, the answer that so many people give to the question that God gives to us, would you like to get well? Oh, I can't. You know, I don't have anybody. I don't. Oh, it's my background. Oh, it's my my husband. Oh, it's my wife. Oh, it's my financial circumstance. Oh, it's my lack of education. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's my you fill in the blank. Right. I can't. Interestingly, Jesus heals him in spite of his excuses, mm -hmm. and honestly, seemingly in spite of his lack of faith, doesn't he? Yes. So he immediately. Jesus mm -hmm. told him, "Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk." Verse number eight. Now. Then people are asking him, why in the world are you walking around, you know, carrying your sleeping mat? 
here in the temple, it's the, mm -hmm. the Sabbath day, and they can't figure out right. where Jesus went. And then we come down to verse 14, and Jesus encounters him again. What does it say down in verse 14? Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See you are well. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. That really popped out to me as uh -huh. we were reading this uh, in our devotion time. <clears throat> Stop sinning. Now, he must have not had his heart in the right place or Jesus wouldn't have said to him, stop sinning. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Is Jesus saying to you today, Oof. stop sinning? You know, I've done a lot in your life. Or what I've are you doing you. with the healing? You mm -hmm. asked me for something and you're healed, but then we, we either doubt or we go back to a lifestyle that we had before, forgetting what Christ has already done for us. That's right. And listen to what Jesus said. Stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. You know, sin takes us on a journey away from God, away from the blessing, the, right. the, the abundance that God has in store for us. If you keep sinning, I think this is a word for somebody watching today. If you continue down the path of sin, something worse will happen to you. So it's time to repent. It's time to get into right relationship with Jesus. If you stay humble before the Lord, embrace your healing, listen to what he's saying to you, and truly submit your way to the Lord, you'll continue in your healing, and you're yeah. gonna continue to grow. So let, let that be the path you take instead of one of not listening. Um, I hope this program has been a blessing to you today. Thank you again for the privilege of being in your home.